Hello fellow YouTubers, this is uh, Russ Goslin here working on uh, one of my other modeling projects. This is the uh, British Universal Carrier Mark II from Tamiya. Again, it's kind of like that M113. It's a little on the vintage side, but um, still a great little kit. And it's got a lot of fun things you can do to upgrade it using some scratch building or buying some uh, photo etch. I, mean, I think Edward actually makes some photo etch for this kit which um, I cer certainly believe it does enhance it um, but it wasn't on my uh, grocery list of things to get for for model materials so um, I just sort of improvised a few places here and there as I needed it uh, one thing I wanted to show you is um, over here this is sort of the um, I guess one would call it the radiator to the engine I'm not really sure I'm not a mechanical kind of guy um, but from what pictures I can tell there's a screen here it might be a radiator anyway it's part of the engine um, and this component right here you can see a lot of putty and stuff um, really a lot of bad gaps um, it was very visible this is an open top type vehicle um, so I was a little concerned about those gaps so I used a little bit of uh, putty to work on all the edges. Uh, but one thing I had to do in the process, I had to eliminate all the rivets. And so I was left with a dilemma. Either I leave it just one smooth edge, or you know, do I push the, uh, my modeling skills that much further and actually put in some rivets. So I decided to be slightly on the bold side and um, did a little scratch building research on how to work on making your own rivets. Um, I think Shepard's Pain book, uh, Military Modeling, I believe, not the diorama one, um, does go into some detail about making rivets and I used that as my basis for making mine. What I did was um, try to make some sort of straight edge. I wasn't particularly successful on all sides, but I took a pencil and a straight edge and, and made some straight lines. And then with my pin vise, I started making my holes. And once all the holes were made, I just took some stretch sprue and cut some lengths out and that would have the same diameter as my holes. And I just began gluing them in. I wish I had actually filmed this earlier in the week when I had all these uh, spiky stretch sprue pieces sticking out. It looked kind of neat. Um, and with all those sprues all set in place, all I did was take my Dremel right here and I just sort of cut down to maybe two centimeters. And once those were all completely cut, all I did was take my X-Acto blade with a candle and just heated it up and slightly touched each one one by one until the rivet heads were relatively flush with the panel. Um, overall, I'm pretty excited about it. Um, I really didn't think it was going to work that well. I was very concerned about the heated blade, whether or not it would... Uh, touch the panel and, and damage some of that um, and that did not happen and I had a lot of soot so I kind of cleaned it up with some sandpaper and kind of smoothed it out again um, it's my first time doing this kind of thing so I am excited but a bit apprehensive because I'm not too sure how the final product will look once painted um, I need to have a little confidence and be bold that it will work and turn out just fine um, one other piece um, was the typical Tamiya wheels. Um, the tracks are the vinyl or rubber type as many modelers call them. Um, they often become too tight and the same thing if you watch my M113 model. I want to prevent that uh, tightening of the tracks. So what I did was um, I had to find out where I could shorten my chassis system. I couldn't use the drive wheel as that is a whole separate unit 
and there's really no way to uh, get around there or make some sort of easy compromise. So the idler wheel was the best solution. And what I did this time, instead of using brass rod, I used some brass tubing, which really was, I think, is a better solution. All I had to do was uh, cut out my hole again. Uh, this time I probably went back another two or three centimeters back, drilled my hole, and I just cut out with um, my uh, cutting tool on my Dremel, I just cut out some length that would fit right in and it went perfectly. A little super glue and then a little milliput, 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 I don't know how to pronounce it but um, just filled it in right there and I uh, might want to do a little more sanding, smooth it out uh, but it's it's on there really good. It's not going to go any place. Um, so that worked out well. I test fitted it. The tracks are going to be uh, just nice and um, not too taut, not too tight, and it should be okay. And then my last piece, I want to wrap this thing, uh, this video up. But I did want to talk about. Um, I, I really got very apprehensive um, with one section of the model. Actually, I spent quite a month or two uh, delaying this model because uh, I really wasn't too sure about painting the interior with all the walls and the compartments done. Uh, I know a lot of modelers on YouTube and all the different magazines and such, uh, they just seem to stick the airbrush in there and go right to town. But my apprehension is that I always fear that I'm not going to be able to get all the nooks and deep crannies of the kit, the interior. And I, I'm just afraid that there'll be some um, overspray and, and little spots that just don't get really hit. So in this case um, I just decided that I would kind of assemble the whole vehicle in subassembly is that I would just assemble this one piece as one unit and this way I can get in with my airbrush and get all the little areas that I think I might not be able to do had I put all the walls on. Um, we'll see how that goes in my uh, later update videos. Um, I'm kind of excited. I think I'm going to continue with some hairspray technique. Um, so I think, uh, you know, this is going to be a vehicle uh, set in North Africa with the uh, British 8th Army. And um, my basic geographical knowledge of the desert is, um, you know, it really does a lot of damage to vehicles, wear and tear and sand and grinding. So I really want to show some uh, chipping effects on this kit. And um, what I haven't figured out is what kind of uh, initial color do I want to have exposed? I'm thinking black, but I'm wondering, you know, that the desert tan and black, whether or not that is a good contrast. Maybe more of a, a, a gray, a flat gray might be better. Uh, we'll, uh, I'll have to come up with a decision. Maybe I'll flip a coin, roll some dice, and um, pick one. Uh, but I'm thinking I'm pretty excited about it. So that's my universal carrier at this point. I, uh, I want to thank you for watching this video, and um, stay tuned for updates as they come. Um, and there it is. I suppose lastly, I should just talk about my... Uh, some people on uh, YouTube may be saying, Hey Russ, why don't you just make all the rivets? And um, I've seen a lot of pictures of the Universal Carrier, and it does have a lot of rivets. And this kit does have many rivets um, and they are kind of small and you really can't see them. I think the rivets I put in are a little bit closer to true detail um, and I, I thought about putting in all the rivets but then I realized you know I might be here for a very long time building this kit and I I just don't want to do that. I have a lot of other models I'm, I want to get done and maybe I might buy a universal carrier again and uh, maybe I'll go give 110% on that kit and just go all out on rivets. Um, but I don't know, maybe some other manufacturers got the Universal Carrier with all the rivets in more detail. I'd have to research that. Or maybe one of you can tell me and leave a comment. I would really appreciate it. Alright, so thanks for watching. 
Um, stay tuned for future updates, and uh, thanks for watching again. And op always open to constructive criticism, being a, a newbie to YouTube video making and design. So there it is. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye.